Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to the National Parks Adventure Crossing America. Today we're at Natchez Trace Parkway. A special thank you to the National Park Foundation for allowing us to be here. We're here in Tupelo, Mississippi with our brand new ranger friend, Ranger Dan. Ranger Dan, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Absolutely, it's a beautiful day. Thank you for coming to the parkway. It is a gorgeous day. Ranger Dan, before we get started, I know that kids out there are interested in where you've been before if this is not your first park. So can you give us a quick rundown? Absolutely. This is my fifth national park unit that I've worked at. My first park was Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. I worked at Cape Hatteras National Seashore in Buxton, North Carolina, Everglades National Park in South Florida, and Kenai Fjords National Park in Seward, Alaska. I've been here at the National Parkway since December 2020. Well, I feel like we're family because we have filmed in every one of those spots. So this is kind of like we've followed you on your journey and now we're here. So you've been here for a while and what do you do here? So I run our education program for our Tupelo district, which is the central district of the parkway. So I work with the local community, work with the schools, and I go out into schools to talk to kids about the parkway, to educate them on what the resources we have here and the history and bring it to the students. Well, I assume that means you love what you do because you're telling this to kids. So we're here at Natchez Trace Parkway. Tell us a little bit about this very long area of the country. So Natchez Trace Parkway is 444 miles long. That's a very long way. If you were to drive the entire thing without stopping, that means no McDonald's, that means no going to the bathroom, that means no getting gas, it would take 10 hours. Wow. 10 hours to drive the entire thing. We start in Natchez, Mississippi down south on the north Louisiana, go through northwest Alabama up to Nashville, Tennessee. That is a long way. So before we start talking about the history of this place, we know that the ecosystem plays a big part of that. So tell us about the ecosystems here. We have four distinct ecosystems along the parkway. Starting up north, you're in the mountains. Heading south of there, you're more of a transition zone going over the Tennessee River heading down into Mississippi. In this area, North Mississippi, we have a Blackland Prairie, and then going further south from here as you get past Jackson, it's a whole nother more zone next to the river, riparian area. There are a lot of stories here to be told. Now, we only have a little bit of time, but tell us some of your favorite. Absolutely, there are so many stories to be told. Like you said, there are more than 100 stops along the parkway. Uh, in that history, we have information about the history of the Civil War. We have information about the people who lived here on the parkway and information about the wildlife that we can find. Before we dig a little deeper in this, what was this parkway known for? Was it a trade route? Yes, yeah, so this parkway was a trade route originally. After the last ice age, the glaciers receded that were in Mississippi. They left behind this really rich, fertile soil that could be compacted easily. So originally the bison would come through here looking for food and salt licks. They would compact the soil. The Native Americans, they would come through looking for the bison and compact the soil even more. As they began to settle this area, they would have more permanent homes along the parkway and they would trade amongst the communities. The main three nations of Native Americans we had on the parkway, who are still around today, all of them are still around today, are the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, and the Natchez. Natchez down south, Choctaw Mill Estate, Chickasaw up north. So since we're filming today at the Chickasaw Village site, let's start there. Absolutely. The Chickasaw, they were a very strong community here. They were here for a very long time, had many chiefs leading them through uh, a lot of different time periods. When the Europeans arrived in the 15, 1600s, they started interacting with them more and they actually found a way to work with the Europeans and they found a way to kind of balance that out for a long time. Uh, one of the key leaders to know, 
a key leader to learn about is George Colbert. Okay. George Colbert had a ferry up north. He was a very interesting man and was a key chief during the time period as the Chickasaw were here leading up to the Indian Removal Act in the 1830s. So he's a very important leader and his family has a long history with the Chickasaw in this area. What would have been here? So in this area, there would have been structures, there would have been creations by the Chickasaw as a place to, to live and be in a community in this spot, right next to the Blackland Prairie behind me. So there are 100 places we could stop here and all of them are important. Can you name a few of these places? So a few of these places are Chickasaw Village site where we are, Colbert Ferry up north in Alabama. There are six Native American mound sites, whether that be for burial or ceremonial purposes. The second largest Native American mound in the country is on the Natchez Trace Parkway down near mile post 10. It's called Emerald Mound. It's a very large space and it's, uh, it was done by hand because they would gather the dirt by hand, put it in handmade baskets, work together as a community to build these mounds. Did I hear that there's also a connection to Lewis and Clark? Yes. If you go up into Tennessee, there is the death and burial site of Meriwether Lewis. Meriwether Lewis was a key leader in discovering and exploring for this new country, for the United States, finding out what was out there, because we didn't know. We had just bought the Louisiana area. He explored out west, and as a reward for his services, Thomas Jefferson made him the governor of part of Louisiana territory. So there are some hard stories here that we need to know about. So tell us a little bit about the walking of the Trace Parkway. Yes. So as I said before, the Native Americans would travel back and forth up the Trace to, to trade. The European descendants that were here in the Midwest, they were looking for ways to make money to bring back to their families. They knew there's a lot of money in Natchez based around the the slave trade and the cotton industry. So they would make these boats float down the Mississippi River down to Natchez to sell their goods and then walk north of the Trace. Another key group that would travel along the Trace against their will were enslaved people. They would be taken from North Carolina and walk down the Trace to Natchez to be sold at market to be put on plantations. There were a lot of plantations in Mississippi in the 1800s. In the 17 and 1800s, there were a lot of enslaved people, and Natchez was a very common area for the slave trade. So thank you for telling that particular story. History is tough, and we need to understand our history, and before we can understand it, we need to know what really happened. So thank you for telling those stories. Another part of your story as a park ranger is that you have spent a lot of time in the world of environmental education, which means you probably have uh, an affinity to the ecosystems, the habitats, and the animals that live here at Natchez Trace. So can you tell us a little bit about the animals that live here? Absolutely. We have a wide diversity of animals and plants along the parkway. Some of the interesting ones I've seen, I've seen a black bear in my couple years I've been here which is very exciting. That was in the southern portion of the parkway. I see raptors a lot. Vultures are very common and turtles. Turtles are a very common species to see on the road. A lot of times we'll be driving down the parkway and you'll see one just walking across. The best thing to do is to stop, let them finish their journey, and then continue. I would assume though that not everybody does that. And um, you probably find wildlife that didn't make it um, as they're crossing, which leads me to a really good idea for a challenge for our students, and it involves helping these animals get across the road. So kids, we're gonna look at UN Global Goal number 15, which is life on land. Let's think about how we can design and create wildlife crossings for the animals, the wildlife that live here on the Natchez Trace Parkway. So as you're thinking about this, there are four distinct ecosystems that we have to consider because we want to create and design these crossings correctly. So think about which animals you're trying to protect, which animals are in the different parts of the Natchez Trace Parkway. 
We want you to think about sustainable materials. Um, think about how you're going to make it blend into the area. We don't want something that looks completely out of place. And how are you going to designate this? How are you going to provide signage that's going to show to the humans that this is what this is for? So once you've created these, we want to share these with the park. We want you to tag hashtag crossing America. Make sure you tag the Natchez Trace Parkway. You're going to find all that information at the bottom of your screen. And please tag the National Park Foundation because they're very interested on in how you guys are trying to save the world, especially the Park Service. Ranger Dan, there are so many stories here. We could spend a week learning and stopping at all the places to learn the stories. But one of the stories we want to make sure that kids understand too is your story. There's a reason you're standing here today. Something in your childhood brought you to this place. Can you look in the camera and tell these students how you got here? What was, what passion brought you to this place and maybe what unique skills you can share with them that they may have also? I grew up in Georgia. I grew up going outside a lot. My first national park I ever visited was in fourth grade. I went to Cumberland Island National Seashore off the coast of Georgia. It was a beautiful place. I was there with family and I enjoyed it. And that really got me passionate about being outside. From there, I got into Boy Scouts. I am an Eagle Scout. And that has fueled me towards doing work outside. When I got to college, I went to University of Georgia, wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to study and discovered there's a class I can take or a degree I can take where I'm outside all the time. I love being outside found that I love teaching and sharing that with people, and that's really what fueled my background as an environmental educator. So since about 2013 now, so about 10 years, I've been teaching people, teaching students about being outside, how to enjoy it, and how to be better stewards. It's a big passion of mine to share the national parks with you, and I hope it's a big passion for you as well. So I think our kids can learn today is to find that passion and to build on it. So if they are working as a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout, or they love nature, or I even heard you played the guitar. So if they have a musical skill, anything they do could possibly find a home here in the National Park Service. Am I, am I correct on that? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a lot of different skills to be brought to this. We want creative minds, we want creative people. If there is a skill that you have, there's a place for it in the Park Service. I have played guitar for programs. I have seen wonderful photography from rangers who are very good at photography. I've seen people do programs where they do art in the parks and they teach people that way. So if you have a skill, continue that skill, work towards it, enjoy it, love it. And if you want to bring it to the parks, we would take you. I love it. So kids, you heard that. They'll take you. So bring those unique skills here. Ranger Dan, this was a special place because there are so many stories. It's a very a large place to cover, but so many stories, so many untold stories probably here that we can even dig into more. So we want our kids to get onto the website and learn more about this place and then create those wildlife designs um, for you guys here to protect the animals. So kids, thank you so much for joining us here today. We can't wait to see what you create and how you're going to share those designs with the Natchez Trace Parkway. A special thank you to the National Park Foundation. Today we're celebrating number 37 of our filming with the National Park Foundation. And Ranger Dan is a rock star. Literally, he plays the guitar. Maybe next time, Ranger Dan, I'll bring my guitar, <laughs> you bring yours, and we'll do a little song fest. Sound Sounds good? like a plan. <laughs> So on behalf of Dr. Drizzle and our rock star, Ranger Dan, we are out of here. Have a great day.